Right, anyway, hello everybody. Welcome to the Champs Ladder Season 11 Final. Uh, Christopher, Christopher's Chaos Dwarves versus Elyard's Underworld. Um, hopefully, Christopher will start with a move. He doesn't. He starts with a block. And gets a cast. On exactly the same star player that Elyard induced in the semi-finals. Uh, to just get hit on the LOS. And another block. <laughs> and another remove. Piles on the KO. Interesting strategy. I guess this is a jump up guy. No. Not sure I would have done that. Okay. Now we've we've got the we've got this pause in now. So uh yeah, that's, that's true, Valen, but still, you know, still better than most people on the ladder after reading the rules, I think. I think you could read the rules and be better than most people on open ladder, for sure. Um, right, so, Elliot's down TV, he's got a wizard, and he got this, this crap star player, just to, just to get banged on on the light, LOS, and of course he got Glart Smash Rip uh, somewhere. Did he? Yes, he's hiding here behind the... Uh, behind the troll and you know he's gone for the same strategy of goblins on the LOS get them killed the, the, the star player fucking the skills have gone again he's gone for the same strategy as against Ducky of getting getting these LOS sacrifices in um, and piling on the KOs is interesting I guess they've got they've got stunning so that's why he's doing it but he did pile on both both knockdowns there. So four removals on turn one. Much like what happened against Ducky actually in the semi-final. Okay, so I can pause it now, can't I? And you can see the uh, yeah, piling on KO for Kaz is. Uh, I can see why because he's got he's got four reserves, you know, with these two stars. So really, Elliot's game plan is exactly the same as he had in the semi-final. Ignore the ball, first half. He's not going to stop the touchdown with seven players. All he's going to do is try and poke at the uh, dwarves, get a removal. He's got claw palm. He's got a claw mighty blow, and he's got a claw, and he's got a strength five guy. So just try and get fights in. Try to limit the claw palm hits on his guys. Try to get claw palm hits on the other guys' guys, uh, and really forget about the ball. Christopher has to protect the ball a little bit. Um, so yeah, right. The teams anyway. Obviously, seen both teams. Strength five guys, amazing. Uh, this guy playing three skills to get agility four, which is pretty funny. Uh, Glad smash rip there is really good. And these guys, Crucifer's team, strength four claw bomb is amazing. Guard everywhere is obviously good. Stand firm. Grab here randomly. Uh, and piling on claw bomb. Bulls blood break tackle frenzy. Tackle, lodge, break tackle, tackle. So you know, really good balls. Dirty player as well. Block, kick off, return, show hands. Thirteen players. So it's really, really nice uh, team for Christopher, to be honest. Does Elliot have babes? I don't think so. He's got one babe and one apple, an extra apple as well, as well as a babe. So. So he gets the claw palm hit in. It's three skills for Raji, because accurate gives him agility four for the passing as well, doesn't it? Play goes Delan. <laughs> so he's got accurate, so he's 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 got agility four for pickups with the uh with the extra arms. So he's got the extra arms gives him agility four for picking up and catching. 
the two heads gives him agility four for dodging, and the accurate gives him agility four for throwing. So he is paying three skills for agility four, which is pretty funny. I think so. Yeah, he's just trying to protect the claw pond, protect what he can. And um, yeah, the, the basing of the troll is a bit weird, but um, I guess his alternative is to not do that and get far, get far with, you know. And that pile on that he made with this guy meant that he couldn't claw pond with him this turn, didn't it? So maybe that was a bit costly. No extra arms gives you plus one for catching. Uh, GFI there, I'm not really sure why. Maybe to protect the bull. I guess it was to protect the bull, yeah. We were all gone as well, weren't we, GFI? Claw Blitz. There's a lot of skills, isn't there? There's a lot of skills in the page. Dodge and protect is good players. It's fair enough, isn't it? <laughs> oh god, yeah, Jelly, that would be the best, wouldn't it? That would be the absolute best. That would be a god god tier stream, wouldn't it? If I could actually concentrate on playing and Fash could do all the talking would be would just be god tier. God to screaming that would be. Necro Necro impotence. No, commentating your own stuff makes does make does not make you concentrate. I can confirm that it does not help Necro Pollens. It doesn't help me anyway. So yeah, Chris was just trying to base up the guy's limit him. But I don't know, he's he's offered up this bull as a sacrifice, hasn't he? Which Elliot instantly goes into. Doesn't. Wow. So he's using his blitz with a oh, I would have pumped him. Oh he doesn't have tackle, he doesn't have tackle. Ignore that. No, he did the right thing. He doesn't have tackle on the uh, on the storm vermin. If he had had tackle, or I think he would have done the storm vermin blitz for sure. Gets the troll up, but he's he's in a bit of danger, isn't he, from getting claw pond here? Strength four guy is there, so he's gonna he's gonna get somebody claw pond this turn. So he gets the both down. Pretty good, the troll having block there, wasn't it? And he didn't uh he didn't re-roll it, no. Good good not greed re-rolling it there. He does greed re-roll there. I think that was the instant I think that was a good greed re-roll. He's getting a claw pommer, claw pommer. Still got four re-rolls and he, all he cares about is causing damage, isn't it? <laughs> For fuck's sake, Tony! Stop being shit! <laughs> I 
and that's a nice little uh, KO as well. So, you know, this this is very looking very similar to the Tucky game, you know. In that he's he's got two guys that don't matter out. He's got a bunch of KOs that don't matter out. So, but every every Chaos Dwarf that that he removes is really good, isn't it? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, claw claw makes taking plus AV not usually a good idea. It, it's okay sometimes plus AV. So he, again, he apples the knocked out uh, troll. Now he does have two apples, so it wasn't so crazy. But uh, again, I would have been. See, now my, my instinct would be to not apple him. And then, uh, because you're going to be 75% having for the second half. But of course, if you do apple him, then you've got him for the one turner for sure. I know how that feels, Jellio. <laughs> yeah. If he's fine on a claw pommer, it's a, it's fine on it's fine on skinks, you know, like throw away skinks to, to make them a bit more durable, um, because the claws are going to be hitting the uh, and naturally claws are going to be hitting lizard, liz, uh, saurus and tackle is going to be hitting the skinks, so it's it's okay on on skinks. Re re, re, re roll is getting right play. He's got to get damage in, hasn't he? Um, so yeah, plus AV, you can take it on claw pommers. Uh, you know what's he called? The calcium. Calcium had four legendary warriors, and they like three or four of them had plus AV because they were always piling on, and so it helped getting fouled, and it was it was absolutely fine. But obviously, it's a late skill, so huge apple there, huge apple working because it was dead, you know. The, obviously, the dead doesn't matter; it's the last game for the team. But it made the apple was only fifty fifty. If you had failed the apple, things could have been a lot different, couldn't they? But uh, still, out of apple now means that any any Kazel yard does is going to stick and he's still got the apple to bailing out from Christopher's damage He's got the same problem that Ducky has, uh, that Ducky had, in that he, he just can't shut down all the blocks, can he? You know, there's going to be some block that he can make. Um, interesting, he blitzes here because it is against Stand Firm. I would have maybe he's just blitzed with a troll if I was going to. Ah, but he had, he couldn't stand up the troll. Fair enough. I don't know. You know what? He could have just laid down this turn. He really could have just laid down this turn. I would have been inclined to lay down because. Although he's getting, you know, he didn't, he wasn't getting a claw hit, and he's giving up a claw pom hit. I think maybe he's just leaving everyone lying down at this point would have been the play. Uh, yeah, I think, I think maybe, maybe that was a mistake by Elliot there, standing these guys up. Doesn't blitz with Clover. Interestingly, I would have. I mean, I guess he can do some bullshit to get the ball. So he, he did the safe play, three dice, make sure he couldn't, you know, because he is agility four, effectively this uh, scale and thrower. So, you know, and he, he could have bolted him and he could have picked it up and thrown it away. It would have been an option. Probably nobody would have done it, but. It would have been an option. The option was there, even if no one was going to take it. So there you go. We've got we've got a Kaz for Elyon here, and it, unlucky for him in the way that it was a, a rookie one rather than like you know this guy. But still, now this is Cruiser for eleven men max for the rest of the game now.
So yeah, three dice claw pump hit incoming. Not 11 men max for the rest of the game, that's fair enough, you know. If he takes another Kazi on the 10, where there's. I know technically you can only have a level 11 on that, but you know what I mean. You can only have 11 on the pitch anyway, but. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know what I mean. See, you could have had 10, you could have had 10 uh, on the pitch there. But he does have 11 on the pitch. So you can make a foul here, couldn't he, on this turn, uh, Elliot, but then that would reduce his chances to do the one turn. I'm not sure this is the best one turn defence. I think the better one turn defense would be, uh, you know, one here, one here, uh, sorry, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, maybe one back, and then like a line of three across somehow. I, I'm, I'm not sure though, I'm, I really don't know what the, uh, what the optimal setup is, especially with, with two heads means that you don't really want to stop him dodging because you can't because he's got two heads so it's more one you want tackle zones where he's going to land and i think maybe it would be even better to do it slightly different but um but yeah so he now I was confused by this because he picked up the goblin, tried to catch the goblin, but the reason was to to avoid the uh, the animosity roll on the handoff, which was a good idea. Obviously, less chance to catch it than uh, than the throw would have had. So that was the rationale, which could not be argued. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I like the. I mean, I can see why he went for the claw bomb hit on the defenseless player. But he was getting three dice on that one, so maybe I would have uh, maybe I'd have tried to put three dice on the on the claw palm on the actual ball carrier. That's probably what I would have done. But you know. Does the handoff. Time for the throw on square forward. An unbelievably unlucky landing spot, but then rolled a six plus to land there anyway. So that was that was pretty lucky. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm really not sure though what where the best setup was for Crucifer there. I mean, I'm sure there's like a mathematical best setup to get the most chance of having two tackle zones on the land, but th whatever it was. That was the best you can do is get two tackle zones on a lander because making him make more dodges isn't going to be that useful against two plus dodging. So I think whatever the whatever the statistically best way of getting two two uh, tackle zones on the lander would have been the better setup. But he, you know, as it happened, he got two tackle zones on the land and then uh, and he failed the land anyway. So. Yeah, may, that Christopher may have been in the optimal setup there. That may have been the best way. To be honest, because then there's three, there's three squares, and where every lands on there, he's going to be in at least one, and good chance of being in two. So that may have been the absolute best setup there that Christopher did. Um, but as it was, Elliot rolled the dice and was successful. It doesn't guarantee one tackle zone, no, because you could you can scatter three either way. So two pluses do start stack up, yeah. But I think it's trying to stop the landing was the better play. But I, I don't know. I 
just don't know what the optimal. I don't know what the optimal. Uh, what the optimal setup was, but I mean, what, whatever the optimal setup was, he did pretty well to to land in two tackle zones and score. You know, he's, he's you know, can't can't criticize Christopher. Yeah, I thought it was a bit dodgy. I, I, maybe he's able to put this guy protected and not the dirty play since he's probably not going to get the foul anyway with only 11 players huge uh, huge hit here now I see now I would have been inclined to a blitz with uh, Glart to use his juggernaut and then call upon this guy or or the defenseless guy uh, I think you can maybe maybe say that was a mistake from Elliot there I think I would have I think I would have utilised Glart because you, you really do the worst thing you can do is blitz with your claw palm and get stuck on him and then give a claw palm hit back, isn't it? So now he's, he's going to smash this goblin and then get the claw palm. Claw palm the, uh, the claw palm, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, maybe you should have dodged out. Yeah, if, you, if once he's committed to that, once he gets that, I think you either re-roll the hit or you dodge out. Because losing this guy here, which he had a very good chance of doing, and it happened. I just, I wouldn't have wanted to have done it. I would have just taken the hit, you know, protect your guy, get use use your juggernaut to, to keep your guys protected, you know, and just try to try to get a good hit in, you know, because uh, look on another day. On another day, the claw palm blitz could have just removed that guy, and then it looks good, doesn't it? But um, he also had the dirty player back, so I guess that was another th another threat to the uh, planning on maneuver as well. Was that just a KO? Yeah, I think he should have appled it then. Yeah, with it being one one, I think he probably should have appled that KO. Yeah, for sure, for sure, that was a huge KO. So with him having an apple left. And with with him having the wizard and normal time, I think your chance of winning in this in overtime goes down because. But then on the other hand, look, Christopher's out of subs, so maybe he thinks he can win this in overtime because he's still got two subs. Um, but yeah, it certainly would have been an option, wouldn't it? Upon the KO there, so he lost his lost his blitz there, didn't he? With the, uh, Troll by the looks of it. Being stupid. I'm obviously not going to offer that one. Yeah, maybe he didn't. So, you know, maybe it's Christopher's kind of dodgy decision to, uh, to protect his dirty player rather than his block show hands guy. Maybe it paid off, you know? You can't apple glad, so yeah, that was. Yeah, I think maybe should have maybe should have appled that. Yeah, I think mean, you know, obviously if this was a random ladder match, you wouldn't have apple, you wouldn't have thought of apple, you wouldn't have dreamed of appling that. But then in the playoffs, last game as well, yeah, maybe you should have appled that. Yeah, indeed. At the end of the day, if he trades his apple for a send-off, that, that's a worthy trade as well, isn't it? Um, Glass pretty good, isn't he? Letting him get the two guys. Yeah, you know, if, if this Corpon was still alive, he could have blitzed this turn, couldn't he, potentially? Killed this guy, you never know. So, yeah, maybe he should have been. He did a bit, a bit of a pickle this turn. I thought he did quite well to to kind of you know do something. There was no real point in hitting the blodge one, was there? So, but then he got the power anyway. <laughs>
Yes, the fluff is that the star players have a personal apple that always works, even, or even on deaths, but it does it after the game kind of thing. So, so we can't use the team apples yet. That is the fluff. So, I mean, that, that was a good turn in terms of him making two dice blocks and actually getting his guys free, but now it's a pretty good point for Crucifer to engage here, isn't it? Limit his options, have the uh, Blodge guy as a threat to the ball carrier, which he is now. So, uh, maybe he could agree to that, but obviously over time is in mind for Crucifer, for sure. Yeah, he's done the one back as a safety and one forward. I like that with the bulls. Huge, huge cast. Actually, probably his players up now. No, he would have been up if he'd uh, if he'd appled that KO. But equal players, ten aside, man. Yeah, Cheney's a monster. I could not induce Cheney. <laughs> Yeah, all the times in his mind, yeah. It's got to be, hasn't it? You know, that's that's the thing. I think, as far as this half goes, I think Crucifer is happy at stopping it, stopping the score, you know, and, and over winning in overtime. I think Elliot really wants to score and, you know, use his whiz if necessary, score and, and make it, you know, win in normal time. I don't think, I don't think Elliot wants overtime in this instance. And that that one, to be fair, at first I thought he was greeting it, but because I, I didn't realise the thrower I didn't actually have block, so that was unfortunately he had to use the reroll there. But I think it was definitely the right thing to use the reroll, and he managed to screen off against his bull. And um, but then obviously the the ball blitz is still on if Crucifer gets lucky. Yeah, Underworld did a did a throw teammate. Yeah. So Christopher does the right play here, he does the blitz, does them in order, so that he rolled a 4. If he had rolled a, a 5 plus on that, he could have then done a 2 plus dodge to hit the ball. But because he didn't, yeah, he, uh, he hits him. And then makes the GFI, double ones it, and gets KO'd, which is really horribly unlucky. Um, but then Christopher uses his apple. Oh, so Christopher had bought an extra apple as well, by the looks of it. Ah, interesting. So Christopher uses his extra apple to keep him on the pitch. Like, no doubt, Elliot probably should have done with his. Yeah, I was horribly unlucky because he did the right thing. Basing him, maybe he's not that worth it actually, to be fair. Maybe he shouldn't have, maybe he shouldn't have. Maybe the GFI wasn't the right thing because all he was doing was forcing a two plus dodge. Um, but, yeah, obviously still pretty unlucky to fail and then get KO'd. <laughs> but yeah, good apple. Even as as slow as he's gonna be now, as much as taken out of the game is I thought I thought Elliot should have pushed forward this turn, you know, like caged around here somewhere. Um, in an effort to outrun him the next turn. That's what I would have liked to have seen, you know, because next turn he can still get to here or somewhere. So I, I would have probably pushed forward this turn with an with an idea of getting out of range of the bull the next turn. Yeah, that still makes him not blitzable. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I didn't really like this staying back this time, but fair enough. Obviously, he, was just, he could just go, you know, over here the next turn and be out of range that way, but I would have rather gone forward. But who's to say I'm right in, in that assumption? Yeah, everyone was cheering on the underworld, obviously, because he's he's against Charles. So it's a nice spot for the ball here because uh, he's out of range of that ball and out of range of this ball as well. So that was actually in a the ball was actually in a really good spot there.
You can, yes, make appointments, but the, the lower TV team gets it to, as, to spend as well. Kind of thing. Just hits with with Claw. There was an argument for making a dodge there at the end of the turn, I guess, but he had to keep him occupied, didn't he? So, you know, not getting getting these pushes now is just really horrible, isn't it, for uh, Elliot? Because this guy's a threat. This guy's a threat. And he's done just about enough to stop things. But still, if he gets a pow, you can get in on the ball, can't you? Or a push here. Let's see. Why is the bull so deep to be a sweeper? I, I didn't hate him being that deep, actually. Now, obviously, if he'd been a bit... Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I mean, you know, it's, it is it is high pressure, isn't it? You can't expect people to, uh, to uh, play perfectly any time, and especially not in the finals. So he's in a he's in a very much in a pickle here, isn't he? Uh El Yod. Not afraid to do the GFIs, Christopher, despite one third. Now, here's the play, he bolts this guy. Now, my initial plan for this turn was you bolt this guy, you uh you blitz him, and then you hand off to the goblin. And you're home and dry. Um, that to me would be my play. You know, 100% go for the go for the handoff and score. You can GFI twice, and then you can be safe from this this blitz. Can you? Probably, ish, safe ish. But I would have 100% gone. Yeah, because you can screen the ball. This strength five bastard here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would have hundred percent gone for the, gone for the handoff, run, and as it was, he went for the the G, the GFI through the screen. Um, now, as it happened, you know, he, I th I think the handoff. The handoff run was was the was better. Um, this is obviously now on the wrong square because he can get blitz one, two, three, four, five, six, um, which isn't good. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh god. It's not horrible. Yeah, Glart blocks. He should have dodged, oh. shouldn't he? If Glart had dodged one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, dodging a GFI from Glart, hitting an irrelevant guy doesn't do anything. So yeah, he should have dodged GFI'd to to tighten up this screen. Uh, yeah, as it was, this this is a very he was in a bad spot. A four plus two plus dodge is uh, he doesn't have the movement to surf. Um, Sam Davies, it takes nine to get there. One, two, three, four, five, six. But. So probably he's on the sideline would have been a better spot for him. Or have just done the handoff. I would, have, I would have done the handoff. Or dodge in. That's risky though. That's really risky to dodge in because then you can't use the... It, you know, I think he went for the right play, which was dodge that way, then dodge that way. Uses his sure fit on the first GFI, so has to re-roll the next one. But gets there. And gets the power. So the the dodges were pretty easy. You know the dodge in was pretty hard because you would have that the dodge in relies on you not needing break tackle on the first dodge. Whereas this way, if you'd use break tackle, you was still a four plus dodge to get in. So uh, I actually like his chances of making the two dodges there. I don't know what is uh, I don't know what his odds were. 
but I think there were pretty good odds of making a two plus and a four plus when the four plus can come in either point, you know? Mm. <laughs> well, he did have sick dice in the one turn touchdown, didn't he, Ori Um But yeah, I think I think maybe he should have gone for the handoff there. I think you know, after using the wizard on offense, maybe he shouldn't have played safe. But then, you know, on another hand, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I wasn't going to imprint Augustus, but maybe I could. Maybe me and Ducky could make a pact, seeing as Ducky likes to do that. Um, likes to play the prep matches. Maybe, maybe Ducky and I could have... Uh, could make the teams that are playing and play each other. That might be, that might be the thing. But yeah, the first turn didn't really matter, did it? You know, that that was the thing. It was much like Ducky's game in the removing three goblins or four goblins on turn one doesn't really doesn't really matter. Um, because what matters is the rest of it, the rest of the match, was it? Isn't it? You know, in the, in the context of the match. So yeah, he's got the chance here, Christopher. He spots the chance, rolls the dice. Might as well, because you know he's not going to, uh, he's not going to score. He, like, and then, but then, of course, when he gets the last part, he might as well use the reroll, which he does. Interesting to see. Would have seen if he would have. I don't think he'd rerolled the pass. He might have rerolled the uh, catch, but I don't think so. And he, he made the rolls. Um, so, yeah, he should have either tried dodging Glart or he should have done the handoff. I think he should have one of those. I think ultimately, you know, it did come down. Elliot gave him too much of an easy shot to hit the ball there with a 2 plus 4 plus dodges. And the fact that it wasn't a 2 plus and a 4 plus dodge, the fact that there was a 50 50 chance of it being two 2 plus dodges, if you see what I mean. So. The break tackle there, it wasn't enough just relying on those two dodges. It really wasn't wasn't good enough. Um, but, you know, look, fair play to Elliot. He got the final with Underworld, which is amazing. And then fair play to Christopher for trying trying that throw on the on the last turn. He had, he had nothing to lose. But then, uh, obviously, it was a big decision to use the re-roll. It would have been interesting if he hadn't caught the ball, um, whether he would have used the re-roll on the catch. I don't think he would have done. But on the dodge out, of course, you're gonna you're gonna reroll that all day, aren't you, to uh, avoid the chance of overtime because he was down players in the end, uh, and maybe I guess the uh, he should have appled that claw pommer. But then on the other hand, maybe he shouldn't have blitzed with the claw pommer. Maybe he should have blocked with the claw pommer and uh, blitzed with a juggernaut to counter the stand firm, uh, because getting stuck on him was very costly as it as it proved to be. But uh, you know, that's, that's being nitpicky. Ultimately, they both played well, didn't they? But then nitpicky is all you can do, isn't it? Because You'd expect people in the final to play well, and all you can do is is nitpick. The analysis comes from nitpicking little things they could have done better. Of course, most of the turns were, were, were perfect or good or whatever, great. And it's just those little things where maybe you should have dodged out Glart, or maybe you should have maybe you should have uh, handed off to the Goblin. I thought, I thought, you know, Underworld versus Chaos Dwarfs. He's got to get lucky. He's got to try something, make something happen, try to get lucky. And the fact that he used the wizard on offense, I think once you do that, you're all in and you go for the handoff. And obviously, if he goes for the handoff, then um, and then he would have won, I think. But you know, or, or he could have dodged out Glart, or other things could have happened. He could have not rolled a six on the land, and he would have been screwed anyway. So, <laughs> right. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you're in, congrats to Crucifer. Anyway, I think he's he certainly worked harder than anyone else has. And obviously, congrats to Elliot as well, getting the final with with Underworld. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.